Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, we're going to be doing a series of uh, short videos and uh, devotional readings uh, about Holy Week. And just as kind of an introduction to that, uh, I thought I'd share with you kind of the, the outline of what Holy Week looks like. So um, there's a, a great uh, chart, and if you have the um, the... Lutheran Study Bible. I've got kind of a, a small version of that here. Um, they've got a great chart uh, on pages 1690 and 1691, at least in this, this small one here. Um, and it shows kind of what happens during Holy Week and kind of the places that it's happening at. So uh, to start out, we'll look at Palm Sunday with the Triumphal Entry. Um, so the readings for that can be found in Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 through 11, uh, Mark chapter 11, verses 1 through 11, Luke chapter 19, verses 28 to 44, and John 12, uh, verses 12 through 19. So it says, on the first day of the week, Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, fulfilling an ancient prophecy from Zechariah 9.9. The crowd welcomed him with hosannas and the words of Psalm 128, verses 25 to 26, thus ascribing to him a messianic title as the agent of the Lord the coming King of Israel. So that's Palm Sunday. Jesus rides into Jerusalem on the donkey. The people wave palm branches uh, and the like. So that is uh, Sunday. Uh, Monday we have as the clearing of the temple. And you can find this in Matthew chapter 21 verses 12 through 17. Mark chapter 11, verses 15 through 18, and Luke chapter 19, verses 45 to 48. So it says, The next day, Jesus returned to the temple and found the court of the Gentiles full of traitors and money changers, making a large profit as they gave out Jewish coins in exchange for pagan money. Jesus drove them out and overturned their tables. So you have that in the, the beginning part of the week, and you're going to see this is really kind of setting up what's going to happen for Jesus in the, the rest of the week as he uh, is asked by the religious leaders, you know, who gave you the authority to do these things? And that issue of Jesus' authority is going to pop up again and again and again. Um, as he's cleansing the temple and really kind of preparing the temple for the ultimate sacrifice, which is himself. So that is the Monday of, of Holy Week. So uh, Tuesday then uh, is recorded here in Matthew chapter 21, verses 23 through chapter 24, verses uh, through 51, through verse 51. Uh, it's also recorded in Mark chapter 11, uh, verses 27 to chapter 13, verse 39. It's also recorded in Luke chapter 20, verse 1, through chapter 21, verse 36. So it says uh, that in Jerusalem, uh, Jesus evaded the traps that were set by the Pharisees as he's preaching and teaching and often using parables. Um, that Jesus taught in parables and warned the people against the Pharisees. He predicted the destruction of Herod's great temple and foretold his disciples about future events, including his own return. So as you go through Holy Week, Jesus is again reminding his disciples, we're here for a reason. We're going to um, go through the events of this week with Good Friday in mind, with Christ's death in mind, uh, that will ultimately bring us to the resurrection on, on Easter Sunday. But I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here. So um, then Wednesday here, it says, uh, a day of teaching or rest. 
So uh, it's not mentioned in the scriptures. The scriptures do not mention this day specifically, uh, but the counting of the days would include Wednesday. Uh, and they have a, a reference here from Mark chapter 14, verse 1, and John chapter 12, verse 1. So it's in kind of those beginning days of, of Holy Week, uh, that especially as you kind of get into to Tuesday and Wednesday, it's hard to really say when Jesus was doing what. It doesn't always say in the text, like, on Wednesday, Jesus did this, or on Tuesday, he did that. So um, there are some things we do know and some things we don't. So uh, I'm assuming that he's still teaching and, and doing things like that as he's uh, going through Holy Week here. Uh, but as we get closer to the end of the week, we get closer to the events that we know happened in Jesus' life. So uh, we then turn to Thursday, which is uh, Passover and the Last Supper. Uh, so you can find this in Matthew chapter 26, verses 17 through 30. Mark chapter 14, verses 12 to 26. Luke chapter 22, verses 7 to 23. And John chapter 13, verses 1 through 30. In an upper room, Jesus prepared both for himself and his disciples for his death. He gave the Passover meal a new meaning. After singing a hymn, they went to the Garden of Gethsemane, where Jesus prayed in agony, knowing what lay ahead for him. So, Holy Thursday, or, or Monday Thursday, as it is sometimes called, uh, this is when Jesus gathers his disciples together in the upper room that has been prepared for them. And they share the typical Passover meal, but Jesus gives it a new meaning. And that as he's handing out the bread and the wine of that meal, he tells them, Take, eat, this is my body. Take, drink, this is my blood. So Jesus gives them this new sacrament of communion. And... What a, what a beautiful blessing that Jesus is giving to his disciples here. A promise that he is always going to be with them. That he's giving them his very body and blood. And this is such a great comfort because by the end of the night, as they go to the Garden of Gethsemane and as Judas betrays Jesus, their whole world, the disciples' whole world, is going to be thrown into confusion and chaos and the comfort of knowing that Jesus is with them is absolutely absolutely profound I mean it's so profound that this is something this this service of the sacrament that the church has celebrated for thousands of years since Christ's death and resurrection that we use this as uh, the great gift that God has given to us in this sacrament, this reminder that he is always with us. So now we come to Good Friday and the crucifixion. So you can find this in Matthew chapter 20, 27, verses 1 to 66. Uh, Mark chapter 15, verses 1 through 47. Luke chapter 22, verse 66 through chapter 23, verse 56, and John 18, verses 28 through chapter 19, um, verse 37. So, following betrayal, arrest, desertion, false trials, denial, condemnation, beatings, and mockery, Jesus was required to carry his cross to the place of the skull where he was crucified with two other prisoners. So here we come to, come to Good Friday. And the fact that we call this Friday good is because of what God has done for us in this Friday. On the outside, this Friday doesn't look very good. It looks like a day of just awfulness. It looks like a day of mock justice and denial and punishment and death. But it's the death of Jesus Christ that sustains for us the hope of eternal life. Jesus died for our sake to set us free from our sins. And he was 
crucified like a common criminal. He's got two criminals that are on either side of him. And we read in the Gospels that one of the criminals speaks to Jesus and asks to be in Jesus' kingdom. And Jesus gives him this wonderful promise. Today you will be with me in paradise. Now this criminal, he obviously had done some serious wrong to end up on a cross. But Jesus forgave his sin. And what a wonderful gift of forgiveness that not only that thief received, but also that you and I receive as we look to the promises that God has for us in his word. Now, as we continue through Friday, Jesus' body is placed into a tomb before 6 p.m. on Friday night. That's when the Sabbath would have begun and all work would have stopped. And his body lay in the tomb throughout the Sabbath. So Saturday, the seventh day, is a day of rest, much like it was when God first created the world. When God first created the world, he made it in six days. On the seventh, he rested. And now here, on this holy Saturday, it's a day of rest. It's a day for Christ to rest in the tomb and to await the resurrection that's coming on the next morning, on Sunday. So finally, we get to the resurrection. We get to Easter Sunday. And this can be found in Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 through 13. Mark chapter 16, verses 1 through 20. Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 49. And John chapter 20, verses 1 through 31. Early in the morning, women went to the tomb and found that the stone closing the tomb's entrance had been rolled back. An angel told them that Jesus was alive and gave them a message. Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene in the garden, to Peter, and to two disciples on the road to Emmaus, and later that day, to all of the disciples but Thomas, his resurrection was established as fact. So finally we get to Easter, probably the most important day in all of human history. Um, as we look at how God has rescued and redeemed us from our sins, he's done it through the death and resurrection of his son. The resurrection is the most important holiday for us Christians. That it is a reminder of what God has done for us. He sent his son into the world to suffer and die and rise again. That we could have the hope of eternal life in Jesus' name. So as we uh, start to go through Holy Week here, uh, like I said before, we'll be putting out videos every day of Holy Week going through the, the readings that are in our lectionary for those specific days. So uh, please look forward to those as we look toward Easter again and towards the comforting promises that our God has for us in the death and resurrection of his Son. We pray together. Gracious God, we thank you for this day you have given us. And as we begin this holy week, we pray that you would remind us of your great love and your great mercy shown to us that you would strengthen us with your word and your spirit. And as we live in these days of this holy week, that you would remind us of your great love and mercy shown to us. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen.